length scares me. That is a big boy. It's over 800 pages. It's a big boy. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are very, very well. <laughs> I hope you're well. <laughs> I can't go nowhere. The more, the movies, nothing. So, okay. Today we have a bit of a serious topic to discuss. <laughs> I... I hope no one gets offended by this. So I'm going to be chatting about the popular books, particularly popular books that are popular on booktube, that I just have no interest in reading. I look at them, <laughs> I see them talked about and I'm like, I'm good. No thanks. No thanks. Thanks for asking. But uh, no thanks. Now I want to make it very clear from the get go that just because I don't want to read a book and it's your favourite book, like, I am not hating on you. These are just books that I have no real interest in picking up and they don't excite me or I'm intimate. We'll get into all the reasons eventually. I don't want to spoil you. <laughs> These are just popular books that when I see them, I feel a bit guilty for not feeling like, oh my God, I want to read that. I feel like there's something wrong with me. And so I need reassurance essentially because I'm very, you know, unstable. No, unstable isn't the right word. What's the word? When you need a lot of uh, reassurance. Insecure? Very insecure about my own reading habits. And sometimes I just pick up books and buy books because they're popular. But these ones I don't even want to do that with. So I feel like there's something wrong with me. Before we get into it, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already to be notified of whenever I post. Who doesn't want a notification with my face going like <laughs> in the thumbnail? Who doesn't want that coming up? Ask yourself that question and hit the bell, it would really help me out. I'm really bad at this intro thing. <laughs> Some people promote themselves really well and you know, it's just really effortless. And for me, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna hate me for asking them to subscribe. <laughs> the reason I wanted to do this video was because quite a lot of these are new releases. And so my guilt has been steadily climbing. It's been, you know, it's been going up, but it really hit home with the next, next book, first book. We haven't even got into the video yet. First book, which is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. Being very, very harsh. Very, 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 very harsh. Very harsh. Okay, now don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Her writing just scares me. And I don't know why. There's something about it I just feel incredibly intimidated by. I've heard that a lot of her books for the kind of first half, you don't fully get into it and you only get into it maybe in the second half. And girl, like, since I started DNFing books, I feel like it's a power that I don't want to continue too much. <laughs> so I'm trying to like restrain myself. In this particular book, the length scares me. That is a big boy. It's over 800 pages. It's a big Boy. For that reason, I just don't think it's the right book for me to start with for her. My mum actually sent me the link like a couple weeks before it came out going, oh, you need to do a vlog for this. And I was like, do I have to? I don't want to. Like nothing about it excites me. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm just scared of the length and what I've kind of heard about her writing. But I went and read the synopsis for this video and I do not give a f I don't care. I really... I don't care. I don't care about this book. And it says, it, it, nothing grabbed me about it. And then it mentioned Fallen Angels. And anything that mentions Fallen Angels makes me think of Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. And it's just not a place I want to go back to. Fallen Angels are there in the past and we're in the now. Who's still writing about Fallen Angels in 2020? Really? The next book, or it's actually a book series that I just not have I have no interest in. I feel like it's one of the more talked about series on booktube, particularly like a couple years ago, but like there's been a bit of a resurgence of it lately and people talking about it more. And every time someone talks about it, I just kind of zone out because I'm just not interested. It is the Shatter Me series by Tahara Muffy. The, cover <laughs> the covers of this remind me of a book I may have read recently that is obviously trying to look like this series so it can sell books and I don't want to be reminded of that pain. Oh, I, just, I, just, I just hate it. I just hate it. They were just chatting and they had an idea for a movie and uh, they, they decided to make it into a book. We just thought of a movie book. idea and then we were yeah. like why not put it into a book? We love action. So. We love what kind, stuff yeah, what like kind of movies so. do you like? 
Wait, I mean, we're really into everything, but um. Bearing in mind, they're like 12 at this point. So sexual tension, maybe not the best idea. The book's making me ill. And so anything with a big eye on the cover, no, thank you. I'm just not feeling it. It seems to me just kind of like old YA that um, I feel like we, I feel like YA as a genre has improved a lot. And I just don't care about this. I don't want to get into it. Whenever I hear people talk about it, they're like, oh, I know it's bad, but I like it. Or, oh, it's my guilty pleasure. And I'm like, why would that incentivize me to read it? And maybe if it was one book, like I can deal with a bit of a trashy one book. But I mean, how many books are there in this series? Six? I actually have no clue. Hang on, let me look it up. Because you cannot tell me that I should read a six book series, even though it's bad. You can't, I, I don't wanna hear that. I don't wanna hear that. <laughs> yeah, six books and otherwise, apart from the novellas. Yeah, nah, nah, I'm good. There's just so many series out there that I wanna read that this ain't gonna be on that list. <laughs> I feel like there's a million series that I wanna read and so it's such a long series that I'm not particularly interested in, just ain't gonna make it. It just ain't gonna make it. It's over for you, bitch. You're dead! You're done! I am more interested in her um, standalone book. What's that called? Oh, A Very Large Expense of Sea. Um, I just feel like that would be a more you know, an easier way for me to get into her work. It's not really on my radar, like it's not on my want to read or anything, but I've seen a lot of people talk uh, really highly about it. And so if the opportunity came where I had to read it, I would read that. Or if I wanted to read it maybe one day, I feel like I'm much more likely to read that than the Shatter Me series. So the next, and this is also actually a book series, I think only the first two are out, I think there's gonna be a third, but the next books that I have no interest in reading are Carry On and Wayward Sunbay Rainbow Row. I read Fangirl and Eleanor and Park when I was like 12 or 13. I think I watched some booktube then, but they were also kind of just the books that you, you thought you should be reading as a younger kid, like John Green, um, Rainbow Row, David Leather Levithan, is that how you say his name? Like that kind of group was what I felt like I should be reading when I was about 12 or 13. And I enjoyed them at the time, but they weren't my favorite books. They were kind of books I read and thought, yeah, that was fine and then put it down again. Rainbow Row's writing for me is just too synonymous with 13 year old Megan. And I just don't really want to go back there again. So um, I think for me, I just kind of see her as an author that's in my past. Some some authors that I read in that period, I, want, I still want to read. You know, I still want to read anything John Green puts out um, because I think he is actually a really good writer, even though he gets a lot of stick. Uh, I think he is a really, really great writer and I did love a lot of his books when I was younger. I don't think her books are very memorable either. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they're very impactful. They're, they're just something light to read. <laughs> also with Rainbow Rowell, she's a bit iffy. <laughs> and... Um, I've been trying to, I've been struggling recently, I'm going to be honest with you, about knowing when, when to not support an author, like when to not read their books. One of my favourite authors, Jay Kristoff, was a bit of an idiot on Twitter a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't want to get too into it in depth, you can probably find out about it if you look up on Twitter, but he actually responded to one of my friends, like, calling what she was saying worthless noise or something like that. I, I don't think that's the exact quote. So again, don't quote me on that. I don't want to misquote him. But he was defending his own friend. And although I don't think he was right, that is a difference of opinion, right? So I think that's your first level with authors. Do you stop reading their books when there's a difference of opinion? When they express an opinion that you don't like? I think social opinions that impact people's lives, uh, it's a very murky area, <laughs> but that's the first level, right? Then I think the second level is maybe something like Rainbow Row, where in their writing, they write things maybe about minorities that aren't the best, and when called out on that, they don't apologize. In fact, they kind of double down on what they do or they repeat that again. So she's often criticized for how um, Park, who's an Asian character, um, how his race is discussed in Eleanor and Park. And obviously being a clueless 12 year old girl, I never picked up on that, but having re read the, uh, the kind of passages since people talk about, 
I don't like the way that that was done. And I don't really, I've never seen an apology from her. So that's the second level. And then I think the third level is when an author does something in their personal life, maybe hurting a loved one or doing actions that really impact others in their lives that you don't agree with. Do you know what I mean? Obviously there's big gaps between each of those. I'm not trying to compare them. I'm saying there's there's a lot of space for nuance in between all of those. But I think that if an author does something in their personal life that I strongly disagree with, that I think is so awful, or that I think a lot of society thinks are awful, like if they're involved in domestic violence or something like that, I'm not giving them my coin no matter what. I'm not going to be reading their books at the library. If on the first level, like with Jay Kristoff, where they've expressed an opinion that I think is really wrong, but maybe they just didn't... I think Twitter... They, at one tweet, you can't know everything that's going through that person's head. For now, I, I think I'm still going to read his stuff, although it's an ongoing decision that I'm making. But I think we have to have room for difference of opinions that aren't necessarily hurting people directly. I know in that in that circumstance it was a discussion on representation of book covers in the publishing industry and obviously if there is not enough representation of I think minorities of book covers that is hurting people. You know, I did a whole uh research project, like four thousand, five thousand word research project on minority representation on book covers this semester. So that's definitely <laughs> it's a topic that's super close to my heart and I'm super interested in and really want to see improve. But I don't think yet that I am going to stop reading his books. And then on the middle level with Rainbow Rowell, I think that if I didn't have a burning desire to read their books, I would, I'm just not going to do it. But it's kind of like the final nail in the coffin. Do you know what I mean? I already wasn't interested. And so I'm just good not doing it, <laughs> you know? I know a lot of people love these books. A lot of people who are very... um vocal about social issues, about race, about a lot of things. I'm not saying Rainbow Rowell's a terrible person, but I think for me, it was just kind of like, I'm fine not reading her stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's not impacting my life too much. I was never desperate to do it in the first place and it's not really going to impact my life. So uh, I think for that reason, I'm just not desperate to read any of her books. But coming back to this series, I've also heard some not great things about Wayward Son and considering my bad luck with series where I always seem to love the first book and then hate the rest of the series or whatever, I just don't want to put myself through it. So yeah, I'm not really bothered about this series and I don't think I'm going to be picking it up. And then the last popular book that I'm not interested in is... Erect nipples are actually illegal in Japan. So... We're trying to heat them up. We're trying to heat the bad boys up and to not um, offend anybody. Do you like my new jeans? Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Here's the thing. The big reason that with Cassandra Clare I just don't want to get into it is because this woman has so many books that I really don't know where to start. And I know there's videos out there giving you recommendations, but it's more just having to like commit to this journey. I'm just not sure if I want to do it. <laughs> I'm definitely not interested in like the original trilogy. I think City of Bones is the first one. So yeah, I don't even really know the names of many of her books. I think I read City of Bones when I was about 12. Or I think I even DNF'd it because I used to DNF quite a bit when I was a kid. Um, I used my school library a lot. We had, I think, two hours, I think an hour a week, an hour a week, where we had to just go to the library in year seven. You didn't have this any other year. But in year seven, you just went to the library and you just read for the hour. Um, and so I got loads of reading done when I was that age. And we had a pretty good YA section in the library, um, particularly for that age group. And so I would just pick up books in the hour and like try them out. And I tried out City of Bones and I did not like it at all. And I thought it was really basic. I, I even as a 12 year old, I was like, this is some poor writing. <laughs> and then Cassandra Clare's obviously gone on to become one of the biggest YA writers ever. So maybe I'm wrong. The Infernal Devices series or section or I don't know, whatever. That, that part of her writing interests me a bit. 
but I think that's just because I like the covers. I like that kind of era, that kind of vibe. Chain of Gold, I just feel like there's so many series I'm supposed to read before that, or I should get to before that, that I just, I don't care enough. And I just, I don't know. I feel like there's other people you can go to on booktube for Cassandra Clare content. There's a lot of people who love her books. And I just feel like I don't need to be that person. You know, I feel a lot of pressure sometimes to read everything everyone's talking about and be that person for everyone. But like, sometimes you've got to take a step back and admit that you don't have to do it all. So there we have it. That is all the popular books that I am not interested at all in. Um, let me know down below if any of these are your favourite books. I would love to know it and talk about it with you because I'm sure there's loads of books I talk about sometimes that you guys are watching. You're like, I don't care, Megan. I'm just here for the memes. <laughs> I get it. Sometimes I'm scared that I ever, if I ever don't put enough memes in a video or like I don't put any, you guys will just leave because I think you're just here for the memes. I don't think you're here for me. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and also let me know down below actually if um, what books, what popular books you are not interested in. If there's any I've given five stars, bitch, I'm coming for you. But like, no, I'm kidding. It's fine. Yeah, but no, let me know down below if there's any of those for you. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you very, very soon with another video. Bye.